13, 2021. Roll call, please. Robert Decker. Present. Uh, Alex. Here. David. David Potter is here. Uh, Jen. Jen Ramillard here. Adam. Here. And John. Okay. Uh, review minutes of the last previous meetings. Did everyone have a chance to look those over? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Dave? Yeah. John? Well, I wasn't part of the. Uh... Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Yeah. Adam? Yes. And Bob? I haven't read them, to tell you the truth, Bernie. Okay. So we got an email for them today, but I haven't read them. Okay. Um, does everybody feel confident we can take a vote on the, on accepting the minutes? Yeah. I, so I we just can maybe some wait minor. until the next meeting if you want, if Bob wants to read them. Bob, uh, you want to wait? That's fine with me. I'm not going to vote for them unless I read them. Okay. John? What, what? I'm not part of that discussion. Oh, I'm, geez, I'm sorry, John. Um, Adam, you don't seem to make a difference for you if we wait? Well, I mean, yeah, if we wait till next month if that gives people ample time to read them. I mean, if we just got them today. Okay. All right. So we'll put that on uh, next meeting. The review. Uh, I've got no mail. Okay, we're going to open a meeting for the public hearing. An application from Rich Strong for a special permit for his property located on 9C Elm Street for the bedroom addition of 14 by 14 as provided in the zoning bylaws. Section 179-2253. All right, uh, I guess how we're gonna, we're gonna go, Mr. Strong, give us our presentation. We'll do questions by the board, um, questions from the voters, anyone in opposition. Um, and we'll give you a chance to withdraw if you feel comfortable or don't feel comfortable. And then we'll look for a motion to vote and we'll take a vote. Okay, any questions? Okay, Mr. Strong, you're on. Um, I, I don't have any questions. I'm just trying to add on. I built a studio apartment, and which is very small. It's under, under 400 square feet. And I wanted to put a little addition off so I could have a real bedroom. Um, so that's why I'm applying for it, just to make my life a little more comfortable. Okay, questions by board members. Why why do you need to come to us? What's the what's the zoning issue? Um, I don't know that. I just I guess if you build something off of your existing building, you have to go in front of you. Not necessarily. Um, I think it's a non conforming lot. I think that's what we're dealing with. Uh, but the building inspector, I think, can give us a little better uh, explanation. It's a non-conforming structure. It's too close to the property line. It's actually the, the neighbor's building is actually on his property and it's about four inches away. So that's why he's there because it requires a special permit. Uh, Mr. Chair, I have a question. Yes. Adam, Mr. Walden, is it, was the building always an apartment or I always thought it was just a garage no, the, the building was a garage, but in that district, you're allowed to put an apartment accessory to a business. And I allowed that probably a little over a year ago. Um, so he was, you know, by right, could put the apartment and, and then- In the existing to, footprint? In the existing footprint. So now he wants to add to the footprint with the bedroom. That's why, 
he's here because it'll make the building more non-conforming by adding to the footprint. Does that answer your question, John? Does anybody have the site plan? Because I just went to look and it wasn't put on the calendar. So do you have it? I have it. There's stuff in the email from Sue. Do you want me to forward that to you? Sure. And I can put it up. I, I could I could share it if somebody gave me permission. To oh yeah, go ahead. You don't need permission. Well, I can give you permission. John, you have permission. <laughs> I have permission. Okay. Let's see if I can find it. It'll take me a few minutes, so maybe if you guys have some discussions you want to have. I would like to make a comment though. The uh, the the new footprint Bob. would conform. It's, sorry. Bob Wall yeah. building building inspector. The, the new addition will meet the setbacks. It'll, just so we know that ahead of time. Well, oh, Bob, could you? Uh, this is John Staberski, and I'm multitasking, looking for this uh, plan at the same time. Uh, but could you? Uh, Tell me what your thoughts are on this particular non-conforming use. Is there, is there any policies that would be consistent with what we've done or inconsistent? Well, it's not a non-conforming use. It's a non-conforming structure. Non-conforming structure. I'm sorry. I I wouldn't say this is uh, consistent with anything we've done yet while I was the commissioner. Are there any uh, are there any good reasons why we shouldn't do it? No, I'd, I'd like, love you all to see the plot plan first though, but I, I have no objections to it. So. Share my screen if you Adam, want Adam, I have, I have a up. question, Mr. Chair, when you're ready. Then it's not on that email, the, the, the it's in the bottom two attachments. Oh, bottom. There's, there's six attachments in that email. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Which one? I can, yeah. I can put them up and share my screen if you want. Yeah, yes, I want to do that. I can't find it. Okay. Oh, maybe here it is. That's what you uh, give me one second. I can, I can do it too. Can you see? Yes. So this is one of the, oh, sorry, it went away. Why did it go away? Sorry, my email went. There we go. out there with all those lovely birds I hear. That's me. <laughs> Rich Strong. <laughs> Rich Strong. I'm sitting in my truck. The birds are chirping. Do you want me to stand again? I can do it now. Um, I've got it. Sorry, I just needed to pull up the two things there. Okay. Okay. So I'm going to share drawing one. Are you seeing it? Yep. yep. Okay, so this is drawing one. Yeah, Bob Walden, the building inspector. That's the drawing I think that's the most pertinent. I mean, it just shows how the the building's already a non-conforming structure, but the addition will meet the setbacks. Um, it just I can't permit it. It requires a special permit. So what what is the setback on the uh, side to the lot line on the right? Is there a ten feet? Well, either I can answer that um, or Richard can. But it, the required is ten feet. It'll be, I believe, eleven or eleven six. 
Yes, sir. It's over. It's over 11 feet from the border. And is that is this John Staberski again? I'm sorry. Is that line that is 66.29? Is that your pr rear property boundary, or is it beyond that? I'm not sure. I don't have the blueprint in front of me, but I had it surveyed by Harold Eaton, and um, I put a fence up between me and the Hotel Warren. Um, my property line is about 18 inches past the fence, and from the corner of the bedroom, it's it's over 11 feet to the property line. It's like 11 foot four inches or something like that. Bob Walden building inspector John yes the 66.29 is the rear property line okay I just it was, was seeing the uh, plan and seeing how the the drawing continued I was wondering if that was their rear lot line or whether it was and if you look in the lower left hand corner is that the encroachment from uh, the other building correct um so I'm on the opposite side of that building. Yeah. So just, and then again, John Staberski here. So just to be clear, the reason why this does not, uh, is not a permitted use in our town is that the building is already non-conforming because of, this building was grandfathered. Am I, am I right? Uh, Bob Wong, building inspector, correct. Yeah. So, so I mean, the the issue is for our town. So, for every building that was built subject to before the zoning bylaws or under old zoning bylaws, if it doesn't, if it if it if it's non-conforming with the new bylaws, any improvements have to come before us for a special permit. Is that right? Like this? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Because it because it makes the building more non-conforming to today's zoning bylaw. So in order to do that, you have to determine whether it's more or detrimental to the neighborhood to allow for a special permit. Yep. Okay. Mr. Chair, I have a question. Yes. Uh, my question would be, you know, looking at this, there, there doesn't seem to be any parking. I just, I, turning a garage into an apartment and then adding a addition to it is there one is there deeded access there's no street frontage there's no public way frontage so you know i understand what mr strong's trying to do to have a convenient spot for him to live but at some point in time mr strong's going to no longer be with us and the building's going to get sold and then the next tenant or the next person down the line you know what other there's there's a number of other issues um there's no is there access or deeded access for anybody else is there uh parking available um you know those are concerns i have when you turn garages into apartments on areas with no frontage i have a right of way into the property and i can fit after the uh, bedroom addition is built i can fit three vehicles in my fenced in parking spot Okay, thank you for the answer. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Decker. I uh, question I have is, as we're looking at this, right, the addition is going to go be, be whereabouts is the, the addition going north or south of the building? Because I don't see a marking on a plan. Uh, Bob Wall and building commissioner, it's to the south of the building. To the to the the way we're looking at it, to the right is the hotel worn, and yeah. then the addition goes to the south, and the the alley goes over towards Risley's um, building there, and the Chinese restaurant. So, in the if down in the bottom where the, the the small pins are, what 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 building is sitting on the line? I can't remember what it is. What, what which business it is, huh? It's the Taylor. 
Is it the Taylor or or is it or is it the the other big building that's there? No, it's the Taylor. The Taylor? Yeah, I went by okay. there today. I'm I'm on the opposite side of that. I'm on the side of Jankowski's apartments and the hot L. If you're looking south, I'm on the right corner of my lot, which has the most property. The property behind my apartment, you're right, there's only about a foot and a half property line between buildings. But the so, side I'm building the bedroom on is I'm out I'm out 30, 25 feet before my property line where I'm putting a 14 foot addition. So if I understand and correct me if I'm wrong, that when I look at this thing and your name is written with 96 or 9C Elm Street, the, the hotel is on your left, right? No, no, no. I mean, you're right, excuse me. It's on the right. Yes, sir. Okay. And uh, across from this uh, so new bedroom would be the old tannery, used to be the Whiskey's Farm Supply and now it, Jankowski's got some apartments in it, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And you now people drive through there. Is it, other people have yes, right sir. away I, through that land. I put a I put a fence up, and my fence is actually five feet inside the property line, so I actually gave more access for people to drive through there. I could have put my fence up five more feet out, but I didn't because of people driving back and forth through there so so nobody else has a right to give correct go ahead does anybody else have a right of way to that area i'm not sure i i have a right of way I, i'm not sure about the rest of the properties mr strong um, yes, sir. You're a butter. Uh, you own the property to the uh, right hand side of the structure, or would it be the, the, to the west? Is that another lot that you own? Like, who are your butter? Um, so, I don't know which way you're looking at it, but if you're looking north, I have I on the left side of my north. property. I can't tell north What's south. There, there is no, there's no. Uh, I'm going to pull up our GIS, okay? Yeah, I'm not sure. Most of my property is south of my property. It's, it's towards the tannery, is where I have like 25 feet across my property line. To the, to the, to the Hotel Warren side, I have like 11 feet. To the, um, Risley side. I have like 10 feet, 12 feet, and but behind me towards the dry cleaners, I only have like a two foot, you know, property line between the buildings there. So uh, your butters are uh, the Hot L Warren, a Hotel Warren, um, uh, the uh, Risley's, who's behind the building? Oh, okay, there we go. The dry cleaners. Okay, now, now I get a sense of it. And the Galantas own the other laundromat there too, correct? Yes, sir. So this is kind of, uh, John Staberski, this is kind of a unique property in our town where it's kind of a little landlocked, uh, you know, in a uh, in our concentrated village district. Um, So, Mr. Strong, can I, can I ask one other question for you? Are, does it, is the apartment that you have now, is it a one bedroom and are you making it into a two bedroom? Or is it a one bedroom going to stay a one bedroom in a bigger apartment? Or would tell, tell, tell me what you're, do, what you're accomplishing here by adding a 14 by 14 addition to the, to the structure. It is a 380 foot studio apartment with the bed in the apartment. The reason I want to put this addition on is so I can have a real bedroom and a closet. My clothes are hanging in the garage right now. I don't have any room for my clothes. So it's 
basically a studio apartment. I'm just trying to add on a bedroom to give me a little more room to be more comfortable, you know, comfortable space to live in, you know. And so this is for your personal use. It's not a rental or something like that at this point. No, sir. I live there. Okay. I don't, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Can you tell me what the square footage of this property is? It's nine, nine tenths of an acre. Is that correct? Nine hundredths of an acre. Yes. So take uh, 43,256 divided by um, 42,869, I think. Okay. They're roughly 4,000 square feet or less. Yeah. A whole lot. And if, if my memory serves me right, uh, that used to be the warehouse for, uh, or one of the warehouses for Whiskey Farm Supply. And uh, I believe you're right. And it was just a shell. It was probably yes, just sir. a zoning bylaw went in. Okay. The zoning bylaw went in 1966. All right. I think the was probably still running then. Okay. But so, so this is uh, John Staberski, and I really have a uh, question to my fellow board members. And, and it's really, this is kind of going to be kind of a, a, a precedential or a decision for us, and, and because I think it presents an interesting issue. If we have a building in town that, because of the change in the zoning laws, now requires our approval or any kind of change to it, how do we want to handle it? I mean, that's that's the issue. Should, should, should we, you know... I personally think that if it if it if the if it meets the criteria that because because it's an old building and we and and zoning laws have changed that if somebody wants to improve it and it doesn't negatively impact the community substantially um, you know I think a landowner should improve it should should be able to to improve their property. Um, but it's 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 an interesting kind of philosophical decision. I agree. This is Jen Remillard. I agree that um, uh, landowners should be able to improve their property. No one is opposing this particular project. Um, it's what is it, 199 square feet that he's looking to add for a room. Um, he explain. You can see on the map in front of us, the land or the building itself is kind of kitty quartered on the on the lot. So it's not going to be close to any other building that's right there. There's ample room for people to get through for driving. Um, I could see if it went right up against another part, another building that was there and that, you know, and if a butters were complaining, but it doesn't seem that anyone has an objection. Well, we haven't heard from anyone yet. It's just our discussion. So I, I'm not sure what, what that's going to be. Um, I agree with you, John, but um, the problem we run into is we've had this issue with these non-conforming lots right along since I've been on the board and we really wanted the planning board to give us more direction. You know, they're leaving it up to us. Um, I would really feel more comfortable if the planning board would come up with some of these, some of these issues of non-conforming lots. Maybe I'm the only one that feels that way, but <clears throat> we've had a, numerous ones, and some people get very upset <clears throat> with the decisions we've made, and we, we have to be careful to be consistent. And so, I, I don't know what how we can be more consistent or less consistent, but I think that's one of the things we need to discuss. Yeah, Mr. Wow. Chair, if I may. Yeah. Adam Pekulowski. I mean, I just think we have to take them on some of a case-by-case -case basis. And I mean, I, I, I've I paid some attention to the planning board and I know where they're headed. I don't necessarily agree with it, that, you know, their membership wants to have, you know, the ability for people to put bedrooms in outbuildings and accessory apartments and all this other stuff where, 
you know, and you think long term, that's what I'm trying to do. You think about these structures, Mr. Strong decides or whoever the property owner is to move to Florida and then put an Airbnb in there or rent it out. And then you got, you got issues. You could have issues. You might not have issues, but you know, he's saying that he's got parking, ample parking. And, uh, he's saying that they got access to services and a deeded right away. I mean, we ran into an issue a couple of years back over here on the corner of Rayburn with people bought a house and then the next people bought a house. The next thing is surveyed and there's no parking spots and there's all kinds of issues, but you know, it's tight back there, you know, and I don't know what other people that are used that area might be on his, some of his property from the sounds of it. If he says he's got room for three cars and his fence is uh, five feet in on his property, you know, when you go through there, you might have more than meets the eye. So that's, that's where our, where I am. And, you know, it was always a garage and I guess turning into an apartment is a conforming use, but I still have a personal issue with barns and garages and sheds and outbuildings becoming apartments. Bernie, yeah, you should drive by, you should drive by my building. I took a rundown building. I put all metal siding on it, metal roof, built my apartment inside it. I have my little uh, garage next to it with my clothes and my motorcycles. I fenced in my yard, staying off the property line, two feet on two sides, five feet on the um, on the uh, Jankowski side because I didn't want to intrude on people driving by. And it's all fenced in and it's um, totally private. My apartment's got 12 foot, uh, 12 inches walls on it. So I don't hear any noise from the hot L. Um, you know, I just, I don't know what to say. It's, it's, it's very secure, small little apartment. Um, I got divorced. I lost my house and this is my new home. And I just want to make it a little bit better for myself. Jennifer. So, um, to what Adam said before, it's like, it was already permitted as a residence. And so it's an apartment as is. So what he's doing is he's adding on to his house. You know, it's not like any other um, addition to a house other than the fact that it's non-conforming at this time. It's not a garage. You have to forget that. Put that out so, of your head. Let me comment on that. The, the accessory apartment is allowed as an accessory use to a commercial building in that district. Right. So, so, so it's just essentially an it's a commercial building with an accessory apartment. Well, then there's the addition on to the apartment. So that apartment has been permitted. So that's what I'm saying. His home has been permitted. So it's addition on to his home. But um, it's not a residence, Miss Gannett. It is a residence. An apartment is a residence, uh, commercial building. Well, not, I, I, I it's, mean, not a, it's not a commercial building. I live there. It's my garage and my apartment. I, there's no commercial anything going on in okay, that Okay, well, listen, anymore. listen, listen. We're getting a little out of hand here. Okay, one person at a time. Uh, John, I have a okay. question for you. Is okay. this meeting being, do all people get to see us or are some just listening to us? No, it's open to everybody. Anybody yeah, but wants do to all join? people, can all people see us or if there are people that are just listening to us? If people wanted to join, they can see us and hear us. It's an open hearing. I understand that, but are there people out there that are not seeing us and are listening to us well if they don't log on or they don't turn up you know then the only concern i have is if we're speaking over each other we don't know who's speaking agreed okay so okay so we really need to wait one at a time please um so that our poor uh, scribe can know what's going on it, it makes it I'm difficult sorry I, well you're not you're, sorry you're not the only one you're not the only one we've all done it but we really need to give a break so that poor Alex can do the minutes so that it's correctly done. Okay, that's just my comment. All right, back to, I think, Bob, you're next. Uh, my, my question has to do with... Hold it. Bob Decker, your question. My, my question deals with long-term effect. Is this... Have you looked into the option of putting a, a second floor in? and uh, putting 
instead of this other addition on the side? That would be my one of my questions. And or are you going to plan on another expansion later with another apartment on the second floor? What are we What are we looking at long term? So, and there are We're other parcels. There are other parcels in town that don't have frontage that have big buildings that are sitting there, and uh, you know whatever you people will be watching whatever is done here. This is Rich Strong. I live there. I'm not planning on doing any more than putting a bedroom on. In the future, if somebody were to buy it and go against, go in front of you again to build a second floor addition or a second floor apartment, then you would address that at the time. But right now, I live there. I'm just looking for to put a bedroom on my apartment and I don't plan on going anywhere. So that's my story. Any other comments? Well, I would make a comment that I think anytime anybody- John Staberski. Yes, John Staberski. Anybody, anytime anybody wants to improve a building like that in our downtown district, you know, it's something we should be supporting because we don't want to have uh, dilapidated or deteriorating structures in that area. Uh, David, any comments, David? Uh, thank you, Bob. Um, I'm sorry, uh, Bernie. Uh, I I like uh, and agree with uh, Adam's idea that we deal with things on a case by case basis. Um, but I also kind of agree with John in terms of developing an approach and a, and a sense of, um, it, you know, what, what distinguishes one application from another. Uh, we've had some cases in the recent past um, that I believe both went against the, the, the landowner, the homeowner, um, and uh, I'm not remembering clearly why um, those went against the landowner, um, you know, and it, it might be good for us to uh, think about the idea of consistency, um, not that everybody gets needs to get the same answer, but that we uh, judge them on the criteria and we have our, um, you know, we have in front of us something which is uh, a certain category, non-conforming, and um, it's already existing as non-conforming. So my, um, my thoughts about this particular project are that it uh, seems um, appropriate and beneficial. Um, I, I, I I see that uh, Adam might have some concerns about future development, but I, I actually agree with uh, Mr. Strong that that would come before us, no doubt, and we could decide that on a case-by-case -case basis as well. Um, uh, it, you know, there's, um, there's, Adam was citing some reservations, but I didn't hear anything more specific um, than that idea of it being developed into something else. Um, and I think it's already an apartment. It's already, a, you know, it's not going to be housing a, a bigger crowd, let's say. Uh, and as, as, uh, as, as the gentleman has said, uh, if, we, if we can take him at his word, that he's, he's, he's intends to live there. Uh, and that sounds genuine to me. Um, so in this particular case, I'm, I'm for it. But I do think as a board, it would be good for us to get a sense of, you know, uh, how certain um, other applications went and and you know where that fits with our perspective um uh and i don't know if i want to get we want to get into those discussions now so i'll save that for later so essentially i i think this is a a, a permittable project mr chairman oh uh, i think adam had adam you were next no i just bob, bob? I, i'm all set bernie uh, thank okay. you it, just as long as uh miss gannett gets to finish her what what she had thought that's fine. 
the uh, question I have is right now it's the existing apartment is a, permitted as an accessory apartment to a commercial use. Correct? No, no, it's residential now. No, that's not how it was permitted. At Bob Walden Building Commissioner, that that was your commercial building, and I permitted it as an accessory to a commercial building. Yeah. All right. So, well, it, it was my air conditioning shop. That's where I had my rich, strong air conditioning parts delivered and stored. Um, then I got divorced, and my my business moved to. 336 West Street on uh, North Hatfield. So where I live, so the shop in South Deerfield, um, I owned personally, not through the business. Um, it, it was mine. So I decided I said the best, I had no place to live. I had a, I rented a condo and I said, I'll build an apartment. So I don't have to pay $1,100 a month rent for a condo. So it's not commercial anymore. I just ha I have an apartment and I have a garage next to it. So whatever is zoned, that's it is what it is. But I'm it's not a commercial property anymore. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Decker. If I understand it correctly, this property has been converted from a commercial use to a mixed use or an accessory apartment is basically the, the only use now of it. And I, I don't know if it took a change of use permit or what, but I don't know that the accessory apartment applies. Okay, you I defer to the building inspector for clarification. Okay, Jennifer, I think you were next. Thank you for being patient. Thank you. Um, I have a couple, one is a thought that in my past experience, and it's totally up to the board and also the building commissioner, from the plan that he, um, uh, Mr. Strong has submitted as part of his application, that is partly a survey that was done by a professional and partly it's been drawn in um, for the addition. So my own, my sort of two cents on it would be that we would need, if you approve this project and he is to build this addition that you would want an as built of the distance between that side property line and the house, because it is um, very close to your setback. So just to make sure that it's not built too close. And that's what um, people call as built. Um, once it's gone up. The other thing that I just was looking at um, and trying to find, and Bob, it, the, in our dimensional table, do we have an, a um, building area requirement? You're talking to me or the building inspector? Building inspector. Talking the lot coverage? Lot coverage, yeah. Yes, we do. It's on the, I don't have it in front of me, but the, the dimensional table, it's on the next page. If you're looking at it, I don't have it with me. Sorry, yeah, I forgot I my, my Bible at work. Um, I think it's seventy percent. Isn't that what it is? So that would be my other question: is just how big, you know, the addition adds to um, the lot coverage. And yeah, those are my two cents. Okay, Rich Strong. Yes. Yes, sir. You had your hand up, I believe. Uh, no, no, okay. I'm just listening. Okay. okay, any other comments? Alex, comments? Uh, Bernie, I have my hand up. I'm not sure if you can see that. Uh, no, no, not, not, not yet. Go ahead, David. Okay, yeah, Dave. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Uh, I guess I'm just curious of, uh, about the um, the mixed use, this accessory apartment, um, I, I, uh, it, 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 it sounds as though it could go back with another owner or another occupant to being, it, it, it is, it is a commercially viable building, right? It's, it's, um, it's still 
I, I, I'm curious if there's, um, if a new designation was created or if it's just the same designation and um, this, this apartment was permitted because, um, and, and, and whether it matters that there's no commercial activity, you know, it's hard to have an accessory to something that doesn't exist. Um, but um, I guess in, in some senses, if you have a mixed use space, it's not required that you use both uses. So I'm curious if the building inspector might speak to that. Yes, Bob Walden, the building inspector. The way I interpreted it when I permitted it was that it was his commercial building and it was going to be an accessory apartment. The fact that he stopped using it afterwards commercially, I guess, is the question. Um, but that's not. I would like I to leave it, uh, Rich Strong. I would like to leave it like it is. Obviously, for future sales, I'd like to leave it as a mixed. So if somebody wanted to buy my building and live there and say run a lawnmower shop out of my other side, I don't want it to be zoned residential. You know, I, I, I'd like it. I like the options if I ever sold it that somebody could do a motorcycle shop on the left side and live in the other side. And it, yes, it's zoned commercial. And I do have a mixed resident, a mixed now because I live there. But I don't want you to take away the possibility of a commercial uh, property that somebody could do um, whatever they could do. You know, they have the shop to build if they're self, you know, in business for themselves, building whatever, making dolls, and they live next door. I don't want it to be split up. Mr. Thank Strong, you. Uh, this is John Staberski. You might want to consult a zoning lawyer uh, on on this. If you cease to use a particular use, sometimes you lose the right to do it in the future. So you might want to look into that yourself. I don't know if it's on this particular part of the zoning law, but. Well, I got a permit to build an apartment in a commercial building. So you would think it would stay the same as it is now. Well, thinking in what's the law is two different things. <laughs> you know, so so you you know you might want to, you know, have somebody look at that for you. I agree, and this is Tabersky. We got a situation now where it was a a business that was let go for two years, and uh, it change it changes. Right. Am I right, Mr. Decker? Mr. Decker sleeping. Mr. Mr. Decker, Decker. muted. But two years is a is John yeah. again. Two years is is a uh, is is a, a length of time that's used in a number of statutory schemes. So could could be then correct? Maybe. Yeah. You know, yeah. you don't know, but it's an issue. Oh well, this is Rich, Rich Strong. Um, this apartment was built last July, so it's not even a year that the apartment's been built. So, um, just saying. So that 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 for me that gives me some comfort in terms of uh, proceeding on this because if you'd used, I mean, uh, if you had not used it commercially for two years, you know, you could lose that that. that structure and that lot is grandfathered in all sorts of different ways and you lose grandfathering after two years in in a number of circumstances in the under our zoning laws not deerfields but state yes that was uh rich strong air conditioning that was our warehouse up till i built the apartment last july Okay, uh, Jennifer, you have a question for us, Ramillard? Comments? Um, my only comment is, while I understand the board's concern regarding previous approvals for what this uh, building was permitted as, um, I feel as though we're here regarding this one specific issue. It's already been yeah. permitted. We're not rehashing that out. Um, 
And I agree that if someone else purchases this property moving forward, that they would have to apply to make any changes or to uh, yeah, have a yeah. business. They would have to get a permit to have a business regardless of what their business may or may not be. And if they wanted to change the zoning of the property. So I, I think there is no detriment to Mr. Strong adding this bedroom to the property. Um, I think it's enhancing that parcel. Um, and while people may not agree with how property has changed zoning or changed usage, um, we're not here to debate those previous allowances. Um, and I think a lot of time has been spent on that. So um, I just, I agree with this particular parcel. I feel as though if someone else wants to come forward at a later time to purchase this property from Mr. Strong, it'll be their issue, not Mr. Strong's. Exactly. Okay, uh, Adam, you have a you have a hand up? I, I don't have my hand up. Your hand, okay. Nobody has a hand up on the screen, Bernie. I can see I a hand up right now at Adams. My, mine is up right now, Jen Gannett. Okay, then I have a question for you then, Jen. Go ahead, ask your question. If I see a hand up in front of Adam Sokolowski's, does that mean his hand is up? Because that's I what I'm see, seeing. I don't see a hand up in front of Adam. I see a hand up in front of John and I'll lower it. Okay, I see it up in front of Adams. That's why I commented. I just put my hand up because I had a question. Okay. Oh. Well, <laughs> Sorry. But Don't lower my hand. <laughs> that's why that's why I'm asking you because I see Adams, I see a hand up in front of Adam's name. That's why I referred to him. I don't see that. So Okay. Well, I see it on mine and that's what I'm going by. Okay, John, go ahead. So, um I think you know, when I think about this project and I look at the six criteria that we have to uh that we are obligated to use to evaluate it. Um, I'm not going to tick through all of the criteria, but I agree with Jennifer, Jennifer Remillard that I think, you know, he certainly meets the criteria for the allowance of a special permit. I think the detriments are, 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 are small to none, and the advantages of improving a property are, are significant. Um, so, uh, you know, I would be inclined to support uh, yeah, okay. I'll take my hand down. Okay, Bernie, Jennifer. I never, I never this and is that, just Janet, and um, I did find the zoning bylaw online and looked at the dimensional chart. And for this zone, what zone is it? <laughs> CVRD. CVRD. I'm still trying to find it online. So I found it and it says that the maximum coverage by impervious surface, which includes building parking areas, walkways and other impervious services, low impact development techniques such as previous pavers do not count um, as an impervious surface that last and it's 75%. With the addition and with the setback I would say that if it was to be approved, that would be a condition that he comes back to the board with a survey that says that it meets that building coverage and setback. I mean, just because if, just by looking at it, you can't say from our GIS, our mapping system, that that's accurate. It can be off. Um, that's just my, my, experience and it's up to the board but thank you mr chairman uh, uh adam was next no mr potter had his had the computer hand up before me mr chair i'm sorry mr potter had this the computer hand up is okay. not just like this before i raised mine all right david uh thank you um Yeah, I guess I like that line of thinking uh, from Jen Gannett, but I wonder, uh, you know, it was already brought up that we don't necessarily have a very technical drawing here. Uh, it seems to me that we would 
we could also uh, request that the applicant come back to us first with these drawings and with this calculation of uh, impervious surface surfaces. Uh, I would feel more comfortable, and I and I'm 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 you know leaning towards this application being approvable. Um, but I do think it's 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 our due diligence to see that um, uh, more concrete data up front. Well, Bob, I think you had your hand up. Well, uh, Mr. Walder, has got a question first. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, uh, Bob Walder. Well, I just, I would um, interpret it as already being a completely impervious surface. I believe it's all paved. So that means, sorry, David Potter, there's no issue. Is that what you're saying, really? No, no. that that. <laughs> Adam, I have my hand up to Mr. Chair when you're ready. Yeah. Okay. I would, I would uh, tend to agree with either a condition like Jen recommendate recommended or what Mr. Potter said that the applicant come back at our next meeting with more information. I'm not, you know, 100% against it. I understand what Mr. Strong's trying to do to make it more comfortable there, and I understand there's a lot of tight buildings in that area, but. You know, we still have to follow those guidelines of the impervious surface, and it is all pretty hard packed. Either was pavement or falling apart pavement. There's not any green area there, and that could be a, a hold up outside of our control. That would also require the building inspector, whether or not we approved it or not, to not issue the permit. So, you know, we can only approve so many things. We can't supersede that part of uh, of the town bylaw. Okay, Jennifer, you have your oh, hand up. Which Jennifer? You. Oh, sorry, I'm not going to say it wrong. That's what. I'm... Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I don't know this property. Like Bob said, if it's all, if it's already all impervious, then that's a pre-existing non-conforming, anyways. So adding on to an addition wouldn't matter. I mean, I don't know what it looks like, but I'm saying that the, then the setback would be something that, and you can do a partial survey and that would be less expensive than a whole property survey of just the lot line to the house because it's a 11 point something um, feet, correct? It's 11 some, I don't remember what it was, but um, that would be my suggestion. I just don't know what it looks like. I look at the map on GIS, so. Rich Strong, whenever I can talk. Okay, uh, Jennifer uh, Remillard had her hand up next. I, thank you. Um, I was going to say that uh, Adam was right. The property already is uh, pre-paved and it would just be this prop um, extension or accessory piece would be, or excuse me, addition to be accurate, um, would already be on impervious area. So there'd be no, it would already be grandfathered in for that reason. Um, I've been by that area many times and you know it's either broken or it's solid there's no really no greenery at all um to that so i feel that that would be a moot point um as for the survey piece to it um in looking at the drawings there's i agree with jennifer there's really no description as to the length between the the lines there's only for how far out the addition would go and where the property boundaries are. Because um, even on drawing two and three that were put out, he does have like a 12 foot side yard um, and a 12 foot front yard and where the existing ap uh, apartments are in certain pieces with there. But there's um, the other dimensions that were spoken about really aren't um, depicted. Any other comments? John has his hand Rich up. Strawn. Yes, go ahead, Rich. So you have the drawing from Harold Eaton on my property boundaries. I drew in the bedroom and measured, I think I, I said 11 feet, but it's 11 foot six. Um, it's all gravel, there's no blacktop. Everywhere around me is, there's no blacktop. It's all, it's all packed gravel. Um, as far as in front of the addition, it's, it's well more than 11 feet. It's, it's probably, when I put my fence up, if you've ever seen my property line, 
I, I own five feet past the fence towards Jankowski's apartments, but I didn't put the fence that far out. I didn't want to intrude on people driving side by side, coming to the hot L or whatever. So I kept my fence in, or, you know, closer. So I wouldn't, I didn't want to be a jerk. You know, I just trying to keep my, put the border wall up, you know, <laughs> but uh, so I, you know, it's, I don't have a Harold Eaton edition blueprint saying where my room is, but it's 11 feet plus from the property line to my corner, the only corner of the bedroom that will reach towards the Hotel Warren. It's over 11 feet. Um, again, I, I, like I say, it's all gravel. It's, it's not, I, that's all I got to say. Do you want John to comment now, or did you put your hand down, John? You put your hand I put down. my hand down. Uh, the question that I was going to ask Mr. Strong has been answered. He, okay. And Mr. Potter has his hand up. You? Yes. Yes. Okay. Mr. I didn't see it, <coughs> David. That's okay. Um, yeah. So I guess my question is maybe for the building inspector, if 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 he's comfortable and and you know uh secure with this measurement uh the setback because uh, it seems to be the only issue and um uh, uh you, you know is 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 that part of um the the building permit process that he would be verifying that the setback is honored uh because you know it's it seems like we're, we're we're quibbling over small technical issues here and uh uh you know i'm i I'd be content if 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 we said he that we set a condition that he has to show us that. But if it's already wrapped up with the building inspector's process, then you know, for 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 us, I'm not that concerned. Uh, Bob Walden, Bob building Walden. building commissioner. Um, I guess I'm. I, I personally feel comfortable that there's two pins in the driveway and we could simply measure it. Um, but I think it should be your decision whether you want it actually surveyed. It would be it would be a survey drawing at that point, not just my judgment on running a string between two pens and taking a measurement. But I am comfortable doing that. But there could be a discrepancy saying that the pens are not, you know where they are according sure. to the survey so, right so you can take that as how you how you want to take it i'm comfortable either way uh rich yes sir i see you yes sir no john, i see a circle you, so i still you want to talk no no john's if, hand is no up. no if you look at the harold eaton drawing and I just drew a 14 by 14 square off the apartment. You can see how far it is off the property line. It's, it's, it certainly meets your variance. It's not close to being over the borderline. Uh, my fence that I put around the property is about a foot and a half in from the property line. There's white pillars. If any of you know the area, there's white pillars on the outside of my fence that are on my property line. And um, it, it, you know, I, I, like I say, I wasn't trying to be a jerk when I put my fence up. I just wanted a little privacy. And I did keep it in the boundaries to keep it, to keep everybody happy. Um, the other side of my property, I actually stopped the fence to let uh, two of the workers from the pizza, holiday pizza, park their cars there that live there. I, I could have ran my fence right across the property right to the other building and not let them park their cars there. I stopped the fence and there's two parking spots there that is my property, but I let those two um, people that work for the pizza place park their cars. So I am, you know, I'm not trying to, I, I'm just, I just want to build a bedroom for myself. That's it. Other comments. 
Uh, Bernie, there's three hands up, and I don't know if you're seeing them or not, but I, I'm not seeing my, hands up. You're not seeing hands up, so no. Nope. So you don't you don't see them in the corners up upper left hand corner of the. No, of the, no, know? I'm not seeing hands up. The only hand I see is Bob Decker's in the uh, right next to it. That's all Good. I'm seeing. Wow. So I'm sorry. So I so I and may I, may I talk? Uh, Mr. Yes, John? go ahead, John. John Staberski here. Um, to my fellow board members, you know, I think the whether a building is properly sited within the setback requirements of our zoning bylaws is the province of the building inspector. If somebody builds a building that is too far, he has the authority to not issue a certificate of occupancy and, and has the authority to ask for removals. I don't think that is something we should be, you know, uh, making a an issue of deciding about putting conditions on that. That is that is his lane, and, and I think uh, and I think we should stay out of it. Um, so I think the whole setback is is kind of a red herring for us. We should be thinking about whether this building addition uh, meets the criteria that the benefits outweigh the detriments um, and let the building inspector decide whether it, it conforms with the other requirements. Um, and, 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 I, and on in, in that requirement also being whether uh, whether it the, the, the addition would take away would, would make it non-conforming because uh, it would uh, violate the uh, how much building can be on a particular lot, the 75%, 25%, uh, you know, quotient. I think that's all his decisions and we should be looking at the criteria that we need to look at and decide based upon that. Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Decker. I've had my hand up for a little while. The question I have is, is there anybody in attendance that wants to speak for this besides the petitioner or are there people there that want to speak against it before we go any further okay well i think we need to decide if the board's done asking questions <clears throat> is the board done asking questions well in my opinion bernie anybody who says they gave us a plan that harold eaton per, per, did uh didn't present a signed plan it's not a signed plan. If you had the signed plan, you would be able to see it much clearer. But it's not a signed plan. It typically, when when it, they tell you that it's a a plan, but it's not signed. There's no there's no uh, arrow that tells me where north to south is. And you know, I just uh, think that you know, I think information isn't isn't all there. And uh, what have you? But I obviously. Obviously, I think the votes are there to grant it, so. Well, Bob, this isn't the first one we've run into with a plan that's come up that's not stamped by either an engineer or by the uh, by a surveyor, correct? Yeah, but they turn Rick around Toronto. and they tell us that, it, that he drew it, right? That's what the, the application says he drew it. It's not on there. Rich Strong, whatever, yeah. Um, Can I answer that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, Rick Strong, go ahead. So Harold Eaton surveyed all of Jankowski's property after he passed away, and they were on site. So I asked them, they already had two of my front pins. So I asked them, could you draw, could you just find the back pins, which are towards the uh, dry cleaners? And he did, and he drew that diagram, and he gave it to me. He never charged me to do it. Or anything so you're absolutely right it's not stamped but he was already on site doing the other property and he he spent literally probably in i don't know an hour or so he found the back pins and he just he he graciously drew that diagram and and sent it to me and i never got a bill from him so that was really nice of him so that's why it's not stamped mr chairman yes David Potter. Uh, thank you. Um, uh, I want to say before I um, 
uh, give any more comments uh, about how I feel about the project that I, I, I want the applicant to know that in general, um, you know, we're uh, at least I feel like he's presenting himself in, in a very straightforward way and uh, um, that, uh, you know, it, 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 it uh, as I've said before, it seems like it's, it's a genuine approach for him to uh, use this personally. And I do feel like he's made a good case for himself as far as being a good neighbor, um, but that, you know, we, we, we kind of do just take these considerations under, uh, under our consideration um, to uh, make sure that we're, you know, um, minding our P's and Q's, crossing our T's and dotting our I's um, and, and trying to be consistent and fair with everybody. Um, um, yeah, I think the, the comment that I want to reflect on the most right now is John's, which is that um, we really ought to look at our criteria and, and let the, you know, that was the point of my question earlier. Is this, is this in the building inspector's purview? And I think he's correct that that's a lot of the questions here are in that lane and we should do our job, which is to look at the criteria. Um, and I would want to suggest uh, uh, that if we're ready for a motion, I'd like to make a motion to, um, uh, I, I guess we've, we've invited a butters to speak already or, and or other no, public comment. No, we're we not. Oh, I said we're going to ask questions from the board. I see. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's get through that section of comments, and then we'll open it up. But I want the board to have uh, not be interfered with with their questions. Okay. I think Adam Sakowalski, your hand is up. Yeah, Mr. Adam. Chair. Just so you know where I stand on this, I I would support this only with the condition of a uh, stamped or signed survey prior. Um, um, there's a lot going on. So in that neighborhood, and and I think we should take do our due diligence and make sure that the setbacks and stuff are squared away before the addition starts. That's that's where I am on it. I'm not against it in general, uh, but I I would like to see uh, see it surveyed. Okay. And, and it might you know as the applicant said, you know three quarters of the work might already be done. So. And I'd also like to see those right of ways too. Rich, Rich Strong. Yes, I, I, I don't know what the right of way is. I believe it's from the uh, New Gold in China. That way, I believe is my right of way. I don't know it's in my deed. I'm not sure which way it goes, either by the Hot L or by the China. But I do have a right of way. I mean, obviously, the property's been there forever, so. It has to be a right away. Um, I've owned it from um, I, I, uh, 25 years, so I, I don't I don't know which is the right away. But um, as, as far as getting it, you know, stamped survey, I I mean, you have the diagram. I drew the 14 by 14 on it. It's it's not like it's a rocket scientist. You can see from the 14 foot corner. How far it is to the pin or the border it's it's well over 11 feet um it, it's it's not a stamp drawing but i didn't draw it you can obviously see it's a it's a it's a surveyor that drew it uh, they found all the pins in the four or five five different pins they found um like i say i'm not trying to build the taj mahal i'm trying to build a, a bedroom I understand, Mr. Strong, but I think that, Adam you know, any, yes, ahead, Adam. yeah, I, I'm just letting the chairman know that's where I stand, that I would like to see the right of ways that are aforementioned and, uh, you know, a side okay. setback survey before I'm going to vote to approve it. So that's, that's where I stand, whether that's, we continue this to the next meeting, or if that's something that can be done administratively through a motion, if the town hall is, is sufficient with that that's fine, but that's that's what I need to see here. Okay, any other comments? Okay, let's, uh, we'll close it to discussion from uh, the board and we'll open it up to anyone, any abutters first, I guess. Do we have any abutters on, that are online? No. Then, uh, do we have anyone for uh, opposition on this? No. Okay. <coughs> um, 
Mr. Strong, um, you have the right to withdraw if you want to. If this is turned down, you're going to have to sit for, I believe, two years. Am I correct, John? It is two years. Two years. Before so you're going to have a gamble here whether you're going to get this through here or not. So it's your decision whether you're going to let the board go forward or you're going to um, come back to us or or what else? What else you'd like to do? <clears throat> I, I don't know. Let let the board go forward. I, I I didn't think it would be that big of a deal. But yes, sir, I will. Let's just go forward. If I'll do whatever I have to do, I guess, to get a, my bedroom built. Well, if it's turned down, you're not going to have a chance to come back uh, in the next meeting and say, well, uh, I got it surveyed. I'm not telling you what to do, but I, just be, let's be aware of that. No, I'm saying what you tell me what I need to do and I will take, I will do that. I think he's saying he wants to move ahead. Okay. You yes. want to move yes. it? You want to move ahead? Yes. Yes, okay. sir. All right. Uh, at Mr. Chair. Yes. Adams. Yes, sorry. So the applicant wants to move ahead to a vote or the applicant wants to come back with a survey and those um, showing the, the right of way over the other properties. But Rich Strong, respond, please. Um, it must have a right of way in my deed that when I bought the land from uh, Ralph Oshesky. Um, as far as I guess I'll have to contact Harold Eaton, Eaton to draw something up showing the actual addition I'm going to build. With a stamp. With a stamp. So you could hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Oh, a... wait a minute. Hold it. Hold it. Okay. So, Rich, let's get clear what you're looking for. You're going to withdraw and come back to us. You want us to postpone it till the next meeting. Is that what you're saying? I don't know. I don't know your language. I, you tell me, I just, I want to build the apartment. So I can't tell you what I to, do. to do. Uh, I cannot. Mr. Chairman, may so, I? Uh, hold it. We cannot tell you what to do. You, you, you're given right. the options um, and you have to make a decision. And, and um, if you think you can get it through, then you say yes. If not, um, then you just come What's back the and some of the questions that we've had, uh, answer some of the questions we've had. Okay, David, I think you are next. Thank you. Uh, I, I, I just want to try to clarify for the applicant. I, I heard him say specifically that he wanted us to move forward with a vote tonight. Um, and I feel like you're putting in front of him these um, uh, kind of roadblocks of getting this survey uh, ahead of time when I also thought that I heard Adam say that he would make it a condition of the permit. And I, I, I fear that we're presenting yeah. this in a, in, a, in a slanted way right now toward the applicant um, when um, it seemed that it would be plausible for him to move forward tonight and that we that's, had a lot of that's not what talking that's about. not what Adam said. Adam said he would not go along with Adam. Clarify what you said, please. Please. Yeah. Thank you. OK. Yeah. yeah. So I said that I wouldn't support this without a side plot survey stamped and the showing of the right of way to the building over the other property that's a deeded right of way. I am just one member. I understand what Mr. Strong wants to do, but when he said, go ahead and move forward, you know, I'm being up front. I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to delay it. If there's four people that might vote for it, we have everybody here. I mean, my, you know, so I, I just want to be up front with it. I'm also okay with it being a condition or done administratively. We could vote it as a condition that before a building permit is issued that the survey and that the um, plot plan is reviewed by Ms. Gannett or, and Mr. Waldron and it's, and it's fine. I, 
you know, I know we're not meeting again until next month. So that's where I am, Mr. Chairman. Um, and that's, that's where, is that clear for you, Mr. Potter? Do you get where? Uh, I, I do a hundred percent. I just want to make it clear for the applicant that there's on one hand, the idea of a precondition to the permit on the other, um, we could give the permit tonight and in order to have it take effect, he would need to present later a stamp survey, et cetera, right of way. Am I clear on that? And you know, am I framing that correctly for the applicant? Yes, I understand. I'll, I'll, I'll do that. You can grant the permit and I will bring, give you the information you need. And, and so you'd be comfortable with us voting tonight, considering that possible outcome to be your best possible outcome. Yes, sir. Jennifer, you had your hand up. Yes. So I just sh shared my screen and it is the deed that shows the um, um, right away. Can yes. Yeah. So it's you can read it. And this, this is John Staberski. That's a right of, right of way that is very specifically described. I mean, I've seen right of ways that are by the stone wall through to the tree. And, but this is with me. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So um, I think, I mean, my opinion would be that it would be a condition that you had a uh, stamp survey that's before building permit is issued. And that would be up to uh, our building commissioner. And you have this, it's right here, his deed. So anyways. Th thanks for sharing that. You're welcome. Okay, other comments? David, your hand is up. Do you still have a question? No, I'm sorry. Can you John, take it down for me? Your hand's up. Yeah, I'd like to move to close the public hearing. Okay. Question. Um, do I have a second? Adam I second I'll second for Adam. Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes, Mr. Decker. My uh, Zoom connection keeps fading in and out. So I don't know what the story is, but you know. I don't know. Maybe your Zoom caught all the hands that Mr. Chairman didn't see. I don't know. Okay. I, I, I really don't know. But, around. It just fades in and fades out. So, well, you're coming in good on my Mac over here yeah. now. We can hear you. I can yeah, see now, you and the and the moon behind you, or whatever it is there. You like that, huh? Yeah. Okay. Coming down from outer space. Voting members will be Robert Decker, David Potter, myself, Adam Sukolowski, and John Staberski. Okay, we're taking a vote. We've had a second to close. We got, we, we, we got yes, to close. We're voting to close the public. Correct. Hearing. We're voting to close end discussion or close discussion, whatever you want. To. Okay. Is that a yes, Mr. Decker? Yes. Um, David? David Potter, yes. Um, I vote yes. Chair votes yes. Adam Sokolowski? Yes. And John Saberski. Yes. Okay. That ends discussion. Now we're going to go into deliberation of what we're going to do here. Uh, do I have anyone that wants to make um, some clarification about what we're asking for um, conditions? Well, I, I think once again, we ought to look at our six criteria. Okay. See how this project is, is it meets the, that the benefits outweigh the detriments now in, in thinking about these, you know, there are very few that really apply to this thing. I mean, and from the criteria, I mean, it's not going to affect really, it doesn't affect the neighbors. It doesn't affect anybody in town. It's, it's, it has very okay. little impact. All right. So we're going to go through these 5121 through 5126, 5326, correct? Yeah. All right. 51, 5321 social economics community needs were to serve by the proposal i would uh, john staberski i would say additional housing especially uh 
smaller apartments downtown is is something that is uh, it, our, our community need. Uh, so I think that's that's beneficial. I think it's also beneficial that a building that could become uh, dilapidated is maintained in a in a satisfactory and an improved fashion. So I think you know uh, the that is on the positive side of weighing the benefits versus the detriments. Adam. Excuse me, I got nothing. I'm listening to Mr. Staberski. Okay, um, uh, you will, you agree it's a yes or a no? I would just ask see if anybody has any comments. I, you know, I would like to condition it. I don't know if you want to vote a condition first or with well, it. Adam. That's what I asked, but John wanted to go through this. Well, let's go through the six six criteria and then we'll go from there. I I don't know that it's that much of a benefit to us. Okay, it's already not. I think we should. Findings of fact are good, even if they're one sentence. I think it's important for the decision. I know it's annoying and it might take a little bit of time, but please do it. That's my suggestion. That was Alec. Yeah, um, Mr. Decker. I just don't think uh, we should be approving it at this point. Uh, we turned down a, uh, I believe we turned down a small addition in uh, the village of Old Airfield on an existing lot. I couldn't stand corrected because they were in a couple of times, but I don't know that we ever granted the permit, did we? Uh, <clears throat> Adam said no, no, we, no, we didn't. And that was that, that one was turned down, Bob, because I think of uh, was three foot within the um, boundary line. Am I correct? But they, it was still, I'm, I'm not quite sure, but anyway, we didn't, uh, we didn't go along with it at the time. And uh, uh, Adam Sokolowski or Mr. Decker, I abstained from that one because the abutter historic Deerfield was a, came and spoke against it. Um, so that, that was my stance on that one, but I do understand what you mean, where you're coming from on that one. And you know, this one, we ha have no, no abutter input, which I wish we had some in butter, a butter input. Yeah, yep. that one was that one was an issue of uh, three three feet off the uh, boundary line. That's uh, why that one. That's that's what happened there. Remember but, to identify yourself, Mr. Chairman. Oh, um, Chair, that uh, we um, I was the one that voted no, and it was because of uh, the setback. <clears throat> um, but that was approved because then he put on a, a second floor addition. On the existing building, but I don't see that this one here is a, an issue if we know where the boundary lines are. Um, okay, I'm gonna. Um, I have to remain as neutral as I can. Um, who else have we got? Um, well, why don't we go through the criteria? See if anybody has any comments on each yeah, one of the criteria. Yeah, uh, <coughs> trying to go through all these. Um, anybody have any other comments on this, David? Criteria? Uh, comments on this one a on number on 20 50 through 21 um i i think the benefits outweigh the detriments okay mr decker you think that there's some different difference there uh traffic flow safety including parking and loading 53 22 uh john i don't think it, i i think it's neutral doesn't it's it's a non-issue okay uh adam Sokolowski. I saw the deeded access and the applicant says he's got three parking spaces. Okay, so it's not an issue. Um, I don't see an issue. David? Uh, I think the benefits outweigh the detriments. <laughs> uh, Mr. Decker? I, uh, I don't really see where it's a benefit. Okay. Um, advocacy of utilities and other public services. John. Not an issue. It's not, not really applicable. Okay. Uh, Adam. Well, he's just, he's adding a, a bedroom, not a bathroom. And it must be power and everything there. So I'm going to say that there must be utilities. There's probably sewer there too, I would imagine. Okay. I don't see it's an issue. Uh, David. I don't think it's an issue. Okay, Mr. Decker. 
Which particular item are we talking about? We're talking about 5323, adequacy of utilities and other public services. I, uh, I assume it has a sewer connection in it. I don't know that it had one years ago, but I, somehow they must have gotten one over the course of time. Because I remember that building just being a shell. So you see as a detriment there, or are you going to be a yes or no on that one, 5323? I'm, I'm going to stay neutral. Okay. Uh, 5324, neighborhood characteristics and social structures. Uh, John. I think it strengthens the neighborhood characteristics to have a, a little more robust resident in, in that area. So I, I think it's, and rather than have a building that's really, um, you know, a vacant building, that, that area sees a lot of activity. And I think people living there is, uh, is helpful. Okay. So uh, I, 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 think, I think, I think the, the assets outweigh the detriments or the benefits outweigh the detriments. Okay. Um, I'm a neutral on that one. David? Uh, yeah, I think it's a, a, a benefit more than a detriment. I, I just also, Mr. Chairman, had a clarifying question. Could the applicant answer or could the building inspector answer? No, they cannot answer. It's closed. Once we As to, the, to that. The, the sewer connection, nobody um, can affirm that? Um, we have to open it back up if we did that. We'd okay. have to take a vote to do All that. Right. I'm okay. All right. Okay. Uh, Mr. Decker? What was the question? Uh, neighborhood characteristics and social structure. I, I, I really don't think it's going to add to the... Uh, uh, add to that uh, but I'm not downtown I don't live down there I don't spend that much time down there 35, 40, 50 years ago I spent a lot of time down in that neighborhood but I haven't recently okay 5325 impact on the natural environment John no I think I, I would say I'd say it's again it's, it's neutral it's no more impactful than what's there now Okay, uh, Adam Sokolowski. Uh, as far as the last question you asked me on community characteristics, I mean, personally, I don't like additional apartments on in commercial buildings, um, but I don't think this one has a huge detriment where it is. It's not additional. Well, it, it was permitted additional. Yeah, but now what you're looking at is not additional. I understand. I'm just explaining myself, Ms. Gannon. Thank you. Okay. Um, so, and then as far as the uh, the other one, I'm, I'm neutral on that. Okay. Um, David, this is on impact on the natural environment. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Okay. I'm going to go with the last one, 5326, potential uh, physical impact, including impact on town services, tax base, and in employment. John? Other than one additional bedroom in Deerfield, I don't think it has any impact. So I, I think, again, that's a, a neutral criteria for our analysis. Okay, Adam? I'm fine with it. Okay. Um, I'm a neutral on that one. David? I'm okay with this one. Okay. And Bob Decker? I want to stay neutral. Okay. So it looks like we don't have any real concerns about this um, on our six criteria. Okay. Any more discussion? Yeah, Mr. Chairman, are we going to, do you want me or someone to make a motion on the conditions, the administrative conditions? <laughs> um, yeah, let's, uh, let's go to conditions now. We vote we to have... approve first and then a conditions, or do we do conditions first? Well, I think we move, I think we have to move to approve it before we put conditions on. In that uh, case, in it. Jennifer, you would approve with conditions, and you take a vote, and then you discuss the conditions. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's have a little discussion here. Um, I know this is the way we do it. We've been voting it yes or no, then with conditions. But <clears throat> I'm gonna I, I'm gonna side with Adam on this one. Um, somehow we have to have that, side, uh, Mr. Chair. I'm Mr. Yes. Chair, I didn't I didn't take a side. Well, I didn't say. I'm sorry. Your your point of view. 
I didn't have a point of view. I deferred to Miss Gannett. Okay. All right. Then, then I'll then I'll make the point of view. Then I'll, okay. I'll come up and say what I think needs to be done. Um, we've got the right of way straightened away, but we should have something done about where these boundary lines are because we have turned down other projects where we have not had stamped um, designs, and we have turned things down for setbacks off the boundary line. And if those two come through, I, I don't have a, I, in favor of the project, but I think from my point of view, we need to be consistent about what we have from other people. We've required that in other situations, and I think we need to require it here. But I'm one vote. Okay, that, that's the conditions I'd like to see, but um, we, can, we, can, we can discuss those. Comments? Uh, okay, back to my original question, Mr. Yep. Chair. Would you like someone at this point to make a motion or would you like to make a motion to approve with conditions? I have a question first. Okay, Mr. Decker. Um, now, if it gets approved tonight or what have you, are we going to have another request later for a second apartment or, or a, another change? Is this going to be the last thing that's going to be granted on this small parcel of land. And, you know, I think that we can put a requirement in the decision that this be no further uh, permits issued relative to this. You can't do that. You um, can't do that. You can't do that. All right, fine. So next year he comes back in and he wants another bedroom. Then we have to make a decision we, on it then. This, you can't okay. restrict his okay. right. Uh, Jennifer, you had your hand up. Well, I was just going to say exactly what John just said, that we are reviewing what the application says. We're not predicting what the future would bring to the board. It's simple as that. We can't, our crystal ball does not show us that. Well, I, think it's a, I think it's a good question, but uh, we can't do it, but it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a viable question. And I think board members need to ask those questions if they have concerns. But we can't do it, we can't do it. Okay, John, your hand was up. I would like to move that we approve the petition before us with conditions. David Potter, I second it. Okay. <coughs> we are voting on <clears throat> An application from Rich Strong for a special permit for the property located on 9C Elm Street for a bedroom addition of 14 by 14 as provided by the zoning bylaws, section 179, paragraph 2253. So we're voting a yes vote means we're gonna, we're gonna uh, issue the special permit. Okay, <clears throat> voting members. We're gonna have discussion first. I thought we had a discussion. Well, you're gonna discuss okay. it more? We okay. can. Discussion after the motion thing. Okay. Okay. Yeah. You know, I'm looking over this whole thing. The applicant did not check the box that he wanted a special permit, just for your information. The application, uh, you know, it, he has an accessory use, and this is an expansion. So this use is going to be greater than the original use when it's all done. And uh, I, I'm not comfortable uh, with this application. So that's all I want you to know. Thank you. Um, Jen? Yes? What did it say on the original? Do you have the original? Um... I can bring it up. Please. So I did not review this app. Look, I mean, it was already put through to the board. I just want to say that for the record. I have a copy right here. I know. I'm going to share the screen. Oh, no, that's just the agenda. Hold on. Let me get to Jen's email. Okay, I'm 
share the screen one second. pulling there yep you scroll down though isn't there more down below no right here no oh, maybe no go up go up a little bit what are those not existing permit no no so this was actually i hate to say it but it's probably improperly before us because this is not a request for a special permit. There's no, no, no box check there. You know, I think that maybe Sue must have put up a previous one. Yeah, I swear that it was checked and no, circled. Because but... Remember we talked about it, Bob? We had a yeah. discussion about it and I said that it, this was in, actually I did see it and I said it was incomplete and he needed to fill out all of those boxes because this one doesn't even have the stamp from the clerk's office. Yeah, that's not the right one. This is not a current application. I, I would vouch for it that yeah. it is a correct app. I mean, the one that we have that's been stamped by the clerk. Well, this is the one that Sue gave me today, so. And, well, and, and it's nothing that says it's been reviewed by the BD staff. Yeah, and I know I saw it because remember. we had extensive conversations about the setback. Yeah, and I know we... I know we had that checked off. Mr. Chairman? Yes. This is Alex. Um, according to the legal brief that's in the newspaper, it says Richard Strong has filed for an application for a special permit for the property located, yada, yada, yada. It, it, the one in the news. Yeah, I mean, Adam Sokolowski here, Mr. Yep. Chair. I I don't understand what the problem is. Well, I do understand what the problem is. People aren't reviewing their work before they're sending it to us. And it happens far too often. And I think it's about time that uh, this gets brought up with uh, the chairman of the board, Bernie, because we can't have this. What, what we're getting emailed and sent to us isn't the correct thing. And there's more than one of these documents. And obviously it was done correct at some point. It's correct in the newspaper. The intent's correct, you know, and I understand, Mr. Chair, that you want to do things uh, on the up and up. And, you know, I would say that the applicant, you know, we're not acting nefariously by we're saying it was in the newspaper posted correctly. You know, the applicant wants a special permit. A special permit is what's fitting. You know, it's what we've been talked about. It was what was on our, our minutes, but the application that's included in the packet doesn't have the box checked nor the clerk stamp on it. And, you know, I think we can move forward with it, but that's, you know, one of those things where these, that, that's got to get sorted out because it makes a, uh, makes it tenuous here at this, at this hour. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Dagger. I would suggest that if the board were so willing, uh, they would agree to allow Mr. Strong to amend his application verbally and follow it up in the morning with a written check. Um, and if that the, and the board would vote to waive the informality that it was the clerical error, uh, if, if the board chose to do that, I just want to point out the fact that it wasn't checked. Okay. If, if the board wants to allow it to go forward based upon the special, the notice that was in a newspaper and what have you, and it was just an oversight, if that's what they want to do, that's fine. Okay, I want to just point out that it wasn't there. Mr. Chair. Jennifer. Jennifer. Um, this is Jennifer Gannett. I'm, I would vouch for the fact, and, and I just want to say that our applicant is off of the call. He's not, no longer on the call, so we can't verify. I think he thought when it was closed to public comment, he went off. I'm not sure, because he was calling in from his phone. Um, I'm pretty certain that that was just an, an administrative error and we could contact him and get an email confirmation tomorrow or um, Mr. Walden can go over and 
get him to check it or something, you know, something, if that would make I, you happy. But I'm almost certain that it is done. I, I will vouch that I had him check it myself. Right, Bob, personally. Bob, the, the lead inspector, go ahead, Bob. I, it, I did bring it back to him and have him check it. That somehow got put up the wrong one. This is Jennifer Gannett, and we yeah. can, um, you know, address after we make this decision about the administrative um, issues that are going on. But right now, I think we should stick to 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 this hearing. Mr. Chair, I, I, I yes, know you John. don't you don't see my hand when I when I do the uh, virtual hand. Uh, John Staberski here again. Um, I think, and I, I think this board has the right and can and should rely on the good faith representations of the employees of the town that that the application was properly filed and the boxes were properly checked off and that what Mr. Decker brought to our attention is an earlier version that is not the actual application. And I don't think we really need to be concerned with this issue. And 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 I think we can we can decide on the merits of the application. Okay, can I respond to that, John? I think Mr. Decker has a good point. One of the things we're talking about is the process because we're running into this far too often. So we're, we're gonna have to come and discuss this about the procedures. He brought it up, even though it may not be germane to this case, but it's it's germane to our process. And it looks like we're, 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 in, we're getting incomplete uh, uh, permits and whatever else we need. So I think we need to discuss that and try to clarify that in the, in the future. I know they do a good job. They do the best they, they can. Um, so with that, we're going to, uh, do I have a, a vote? Do we have to take a vote? No, there's the only, vote? Motion, only motion on the floor is my motion to approve the petition. Okay. With the conditions. <laughs> with conditions. And, and, and if we vote to approve it, we should discuss conditions after the vote. Okay. I move the question. Okay. We're going to our vote. Okay, the vote. Uh, Mr. Decker. No. David Potter. Yes. Adam Sokolowski. I can't hear you, Adam. He's muted. Sorry. John. Uh, yes, yes, Mr. Chair. Sorry, I had the mute situation with the condition of a stamped survey with the setbacks. But that's not, we're voting. We're oh. voting. Wait, John, put it for us. I voted no because it wasn't included what you're talking about. It's not, yeah, whatever. All right, Mr. Chair, do we have to we have to vote it with the conditions all together well, at the end? That's the question that I put forward before. I said we should the policy has been that we vote it in and then put conditions. But I'd rather put the conditions in and then vote on the 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 yes or no of the conditions. But I don't know if that's legal or not. I think it's legal either way, as long as it's in there. I don't think they're splitting hairs, but okay. Okay. But Mr. Chairman, the, the motion was not stated with specific conditions. It correct. was stated with correct. the open-ended. That's correct. David Potter. All right. Well, I don't know if Mr. Staversky wants to amend his motions because I'm not going to support it unless there's that, that condition's on there. It is with conditions. It's with you know, conditions. And we're going to vote on the conditions uh, and discuss them. I mean, there are a lot of conditions we can talk about on it. I mean, okay. All right, sure. It's only a 14 by 14 bedroom. It's not like it's a 20,000 square foot box. So you're saying yes. Sure. And John, you're a yes. Yes.
I'll be honest, I have mixed feelings on this without the conditions. But I will vote yes, but we better have the conditions or I'm not going to be happy. Mm. You said it in the vote that it's going to be. With what, what, what is said and what happens as an always follow through. Okay, it and passes it four writing. to one. It is passed. Okay, now conditions. Okay, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair. Yes, sir, Mr. Sokolowski. I make a motion to condition the application that a survey, including side setbacks, be presented to the building inspector prior to the issuance of a building permit to make sure that it is in, in with the requirements of our town setbacks. Okay. I'll second that. Okay. Any other comments? Um, I have a question, Adam. Is that going to be, are we going to require a stamp on that? Yes. Okay. So we're going to put it, it's going to have to be stamped from the um, surveyor, correct? Yes. And that's going to include all the right of ways? The Jen Gannett shared the screen with the right of way that was pretty detailed. So I'm not going to add that as a condition. There might be others, though. As long as there's one right of way, I'm fine with it. Yeah. Okay. I am too. Uh, any other comments, conditions we want to put in there? You know, uh, uh, the last I was I was at the um, at the treehouse um, uh, hearing, but at the uh, Whitney one, I had moved that we should have some standard. Okay, let's John. Let's not move on that yet. Okay, that's coming up next. No, but uh, the conditions that, I mean, and I earmarked, I think it was for Jennifer, the ones that Adam Costa had uh, indicated in, in the, uh, the Dollar General hearings, that which ones are the standard ones? Yeah, it was for Sue you did that for. Sue? Okay, I thought it was, I don't, forgot who it was for. Um, but, you know, I think it's, good practice for us to have a set of standard conditions that we should condition every special permit. And, and you know, I had indicated which ones I thought were the ones that should be standard or, or we could ask Adam Costa. But I think if we want to do those same ones, if we don't, I don't know. But I, I do think it's important to not to, to have other conditions. Mr. Chairman, David Potter. Yes, David Potter. John, could you describe, uh, you know, I mean, do, do you have a recollection of what, or, or can we, can we, can we refer to them as the previously designated standard conditions or? Well, so I made the motion and Sue said, well, what did you mean by it? I, or I think Jennifer, I don't remember who, who it did. And I said, it was the ones that Adam had indicated at the Dollar General public hearing were standard conditions. And I, I remember when he when he went through those, I said, "Yeah, we ought to have those on all of ours." Uh, so they don't always apply the way that they were written. They don't what? They don't always apply from the way that they were written. Okay. That's why Sue was having such a hard time understanding what was said and and then applying it to a different hearing. Yeah, so I think I you did tonight. Hand. Pardon me. Adam. 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 I, I, to, I would tend to agree with Miss Scannon. I've seen that firsthand. They that it doesn't necessarily always apply. That's kind of the problem. But I agree with you, John, that there should be some type of guide, if you would. Alex has his hand risen. Yes, I'm sorry, Alex. Um, Adam, you made a motion to condition the application. Um, yeah. are we going to take a vote on that? Yeah, uh, let's, let's vote on that and move to yeah. these other ones later. So okay. you, I move the question. Okay. Could, well, are, hold on, hold on. Adam, right, could are you, we, could you are we all safe? set with conditions that we want on this right now? Hmm? No, we're voting on this one. Yeah. Could you just restate it, Adam, for me? Thank you. Mr. Chair, with your permission, I'm going to restate the motion. Yes, subscribe. please. It will condition the application 
that the applicant have a survey completed, including side survey setbacks by a stamped certified surveyor, and that that is reviewed by the building commissioner and before or strike the end before the building permit is issued, verifying that it's in compliance with our bylaws. Okay. Do I have a second? I second, David Potter. Okay. Okay, we're gonna take our vote. Mr. Decker. And the, the vote was on the condition? Yes, we're voting on conditions. Yes. Uh, David? Yes. Um, I vote yes. Chair votes yes. Adam Sokolowski? Yes, Mr. Chair. And John? Yes. Okay. So that's a condition that we're going to ask for. Do we have anything else we want to put on there? Well, that's where we were before. That's where we are now. That's correct. So, you know, and maybe we pose this question to Adam Costa that there are, you know, and I've, I've just appeared before a bunch of planning boards and ZBAs where most towns have a list of standard conditions. And, and Adam put a bunch of them into the Dollar General opinion. Um, we should have those and they should be on every 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 application i i last time i made a motion to do the standard conditions but i know it caused some uh, some because i don't know all the conditions some consternation at the, in that town and i don't know whether jennifer you tell me if we did that same thing again if i made that same motion would it would it be inappropriate or be problematic yes it will we've got to decide as a board what those decisions are and have it written down because we don't know what they are. And when Sue went to look for them, she wasn't clear what standard conditions. So either we well, need to talk to Adam Costa or we need to- Okay, can I make a recommendation? If the board gives me they're okay, I will call up Adam and I'll go through these things. Come up with a form, come up with what we he thinks we should have. I'll get them to everybody on the board and then we can look at them and then we can decide. Is, it, is, everyone, is everyone not comfortable with that? I'll can sit I, down, we'll talk and we'll, I'll say, we're looking for the bulletproof well, standard ones. And um, then I'll go to the office, have the office email them out to everybody. You take a look at them and we get to our next meeting. We'll take and we'll discuss them. Bernie? Yes. This is Jennifer Ramillard. Yep. I'm not talking about the vote. Is it okay that I speak? Cause I know you closed public comment. Oh, no, no, you can speak. Go ahead. Okay. So in regards to what um, you're proposing now, I thought later in the meeting on the agenda, we were discussing what specificities were going to be put in our application. And in that process, we can come up with the standard conditions and all of those other things. So as a board, we are going to discuss that tonight, um, as long as we're following the agenda. And then I think once we look at the standards and things at that point, you could bring your questions to Attorney Costa. Because we probably will have further questions um, once we are done with that analysis. And I believe um, the whole reason that this is occurring, uh, John Staberski, you know, you brought this up before, and we had talked a few meetings ago, or it was brought up, um, you know, that we should come up with a process and there should be a standard application. So that way any applicants uh, coming in would not have any further questions and the whole entire process would be reviewed with the town, uh, whether it's Sue or Jen Gannett or whomever the building inspector before coming in front of us. So everyone else would know what the standards are, what our process is. So our meetings would be precise and to the point and there wouldn't be any concern later on. So let me withdraw. This is this is a very small special permit. I mean, it's not complicated. It's not going to have a huge impact. Maybe we don't do any conditions other than the one we already voted on, and uh, and save this this issue for another day. Maybe later and later today. <laughs> okay. Other comments. Uh, Adam, you had your hand up. No, I, I, I've, yeah, I've had enough for today. 
Yeah. David? Uh, no, I agree with where, where we're going with this. And um, I do think I, I'm looking at um, the a draft version of the special conditions that, that came from Adam. And they're, they're very over the top, if you will, for this project, although some of them could be applicable just as a, a boilerplate type of thing. So, but otherwise, I'm, I'm quite content with where we're at and, and just attaching this one condition. I'm on board with Mr. Potter, with what he said. I agree. Mr. Decker? I don't care if you put any more on it or not. Okay. All right. Um, Do we well, have to vote again, Mr. Chair? Mr. Scribe? Are we good? We did enough voting on this? I, I think I think we're all set with votes. I think we've uh, voted yep. it in, and then we voted the conditions we wanted. Uh, we partially discussed the... Um, um, we've got two more things the application process and the uh, conditions um, I don't think anyone's ready to discuss those tonight I, from what I can tell I think I gotta go check my dog for ticks I got a problem at home check yourself too uh, yeah my fiance thinks the dog might have another tick so oh boy I've picked over 30 off of my dog in the last few days they're all yeah. over the place it's really all crazy Okay, so any other comments? I'd rather uh, talk about ticks than talk about the further conditions, but that's you're right. I agree with you, John. Okay, Mr. Um, Mr. Chair. So, all right, can I make a comment? So let's, we got another meeting in a month. Um, will anybody be averse if I go in and talk with Adam about some, some, some bulletproof ones? So I, what I would suggest you do, Bernie, is do talk with him. But I think what we would like you know, him to do is review our application process and make suggestions consistent with what the practice is elsewhere in, in the state, and then put together a bunch of boilerplate conditions that we can select some or all or none, depending upon the permit application. Okay. And, and not just boilerplate, because there's going to be some that will be appropriate for some applications and some that won't. So we can kind of go one, two, three, eight, and four or something like that. Okay. Uh, Jen, Remillard, you are next. Um, my only comment to that is while I appreciate John's suggestion of having attorney costs to do the work, uh, for example, the town of Amherst and other communities have a lengthy application, which we could utilize as a, as a template. Attorney cost is going to cost us additional funding to review all of that. So wouldn't it be more pertinent for us to have a working meeting uh, aside from our typical meetings to look at previous communities? Um, maybe Jen Gannett could just email blast out so there's not a discussion. So we could review them prior to a working meeting where we could then review and comment on those. That way we're saving money, we're saving time, um, and we're accomplishing the goal of having the discussion amongst our group and coming up with all of those specificities. If you need to have attorney cost to provide us with a more in-depth um, condition list, I think Jen Gannett could you know, email him and get that, but it would be who of us to you know, to really be successful as a board to look over previous uh, templates communities use because why reinvent the wheel and why have attorney Costa do all of that work and charge us more taxpayer money? All right, Jennifer. I absolutely agree with Jennifer Remillard. And I think that it's something that we could work administratively before we give it to Adam. I think Adam can have a final say once we've we've written it all down and agreed as a board and as staff at town hall. Um, we just need to, to, to do some of the background work before jumping to our attorney because we need to have something like a, a baseline for him. Uh, Adam. Sokolowski, you were next. Yes. Uh, all I get to say is, you know, there's an administrative staff 
that I think can get us pretty far or something for the board to look at. Yes. They're here. I know Jen's busy, but there's other administrative staff that should be able to be tasked with this, either, you know, going on the town's websites and pulling up some other stuff and, and bring it back to us. And other than that, I, uh, you guys have a good night. Uh, I'm going, uh, going checking for ticks. Okay. John, last comment. Um, uh, you know, I would uh, still suggest that we have Adam do the work. He has a he has a, a bird's eye view of what's happening throughout the whole state and not just Western Mass. He knows what's best practice and what isn't. Amherst could be out of date and we don't even know it. Uh, I would rather have uh, an expert do it uh, and and not be you know kind of us hunting and pecking around. He he knows he knows what the good templates are, and he's going to be the one to defend us and have to defend these conditions and our process. And I'd rather them be, you know, in accordance with his views on, on these things. So that's, okay. just, that's just my opinion. Can I make a suggestion? We're, we're, this, we're, gonna, we're gonna finish this up. If board members have suggestions, get them to the office, send them in, We'll take a look at them, and then I'll give them. The, I I agree with you, John. If you have suggestions that you want to look at, look at Amherst or wherever you want to look at. Write them down, and then we can send them to Adam, and I'll discuss them with Adam. But I think the lawyers need to. If we're going to do this right, it's going to have to be the lawyers looking at them. Okay, Bernie. I just want to say I don't think anybody is saying not to have Attorney Costa re review it before it becomes the final version. It's just just you know to find formatting and come up with concepts to present to him that's all i that's what i'm referring to well, uh, so it definitely needs to be reviewed by council before it's implemented right. it's no, process, listen i've been trying to get this done for over a year now to get this done and you know what we need to do it and someone's going to take the lead in this and i'm going to take the lead on it it needs to be done we've been putting it off and putting it off and i agree with john that we're, you know what, there's a lot of ways of doing this and we're gonna discuss this and go through another meeting and so on. If you have concerns, if you have ideas, send them to Jen, I'll, we'll send them to Adam Costa and then we'll talk about it. But that's the procedure that, that we're gonna follow. Ready? Jen, last question here, comment. Bottom Jen. No, I have something to say. I don't appreciate the way you're talking to me because I wasn't no, being no, no, rude no, to no. you. And I really just was making my opinion of there's no one yeah. saying not, let me finish, please. I'm not saying that there is no reason for an attorney not to be involved. There definitely needs to be one done. But, and I appreciate the fact of sending everything into the community or to the town hall. But I, I also feel as though, um, you know, it's being dismissed when saying that we could do some of the legwork and submit that stuff. And, and that's my opinion. And you cutting me off or being rude and disrespectful is not appreciated because I show you respect being on this board and I deserve the same. Jennifer, comment. Yes. Jen, Garnett. Gannett. It's Jen Gannett. I agree with Jennifer Remillard that anything after we develop it will go to council. We have to do the legwork. We haven't taken a working meeting. We haven't gathered information. I've talked to the building commissioner. I've talked to the town administrator. I've talked to you, Bernie, about things that are necessary that we have together. We have just had individual conversations and nothing has been pulled together. We need to pull together this information then discuss it as a board, if this is something that you like, and then it goes to Adam for review to make sure that it's legally solid. And then, you know, and then vote on it. I, it there's just information. There's things that this board needs to learn. There's things that this board needs to um, understand about the process. I don't have an issue with that, but we, we, we need to do something though. We, I know you're busy and I understand that. Um, and that's what if the board wants to take that direction, then fine. But we need to take a direction. So that's then all I'm saying. We need to take agenda. a direction. That's, then you need to put it onto an agenda that says 
At the next meeting, we are going to bring samples or questions or details that we want in applications or conditions that are standard, and we can all discuss it and write it down and come up with some sort of format. We, we haven't done that. Like we keep saying this over and over and over again, but then there's no step forward that it gets put onto agenda that we discuss it. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes, Dave? Is, is, is this still our meeting? It is. Yeah, we haven't closed. Okay, okay. go ahead, Dave. Comments? Um, yes, in essence, I agree with what I'm hearing. Um, and I, I like the idea of a working meeting. Um, that that's not been something that, that we've discussed before, but I think <laughs> we, have, we have some other issues that we need to work on uh, that I could add to this list. Uh, happily, um, and um, you know, I I, uh, I I guess I don't want to bring them up right now and and stir the pot further. But but we have we have uh, uh, I think some some process issues that we should discuss as a board, um, and uh, and this issue of planning um, a, a set of uh, boilerplate conditions is is another issue that a working meeting would be helpful, and. Um, and, um, uh, you know, for us to um, familiarize ourselves with the language of what other people are using for boilerplate conditions prior to sending what we would think to Adam, but obviously um, his opinion counts the most in the end. That's my feeling. Thank you. John, comments? I don't know. So I've been involved in creating all sorts of like, you know, I was a county commissioner and helped create FERCOG and have drafted, you know, founding documents and bylaws a lot. And, and I think as lay people, if we are, if we are searching around for what is the best, it is a very time consuming and difficult process, really cumbersome. Uh, and, and we don't have the expertise as well to kind of discern what are the better conditions, what are the better processes. I think, you know, I think Adam would be in the best position to make recommendations to us and, and suggestions. And maybe he says Amherst, Duxbury, Plymouth, Provincetown, these are the ones you got to look at. Why don't you focus on those and, and, and come up with what meets what we want. But rather than us kind of trying to do a survey of the state to have him and his expertise direct us and say, these are the things you need to think about. These are the ones you should look at. I think that's the best way to get from point A to point B in, uh, in the most feasible manner or the easiest and, and quickest and least painful manner. Um, you know, we could be mucking around in, in, in this for a long, long time without any results, without a, a, some, some direction from a professional. Okay, Alex, you had your hand up. Um, do you guys just want to, like, have a working group next week? Do you have a time? Does ever, anybody have a time that we can just mess around for an hour? It doesn't have to be an official thing unless there's a quorum, but... It has to just, be an official thing. We have to. We have to post it. Yeah. Um, okay. Can there just be like two of us that work on it, and then we go from there? Because because that's not technically a quorum. I'm more than happy to work with you, Alex. Okay, let's do it. Let's Great. um send have me an email. Time. and We'll figure it out. I don't have your email address. Um, I will get it to Janet, you. Janet, can you send it to me? Thank you. Yes, yeah. I will. Yeah, we can we can mess around on Zoom and see what we can come up with, and then put it uh, on the agenda to discuss. Uh, sure, you. yeah, we can have a baby group and report out to the board. Thank you. Any other also, comments? Okay, uh, yes, I have my hand up. Oh, I'm sorry, I can't, I can't see any hands. That's okay, I appreciate you asking. Um, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm delighted if those guys want to get to work on some, some investigations, but I, I agree uh, wholeheartedly with what John said that Adam could pr probably point us in the right direction and my concern is solely that we do process some of this information as a board we try to get our arms around it just get us a lay of the land otherwise you know adam is likely to come to us and say 
you can pick and choose from all of these and we have no idea what he's talking about. We'd at least have a, a sense of um, uh, what some common issues and, uh, and reference points are. But either way, um, uh, you know, working from both ends seems like a fine idea. And, uh, you know, I can, I can agree with everybody trying to understand this a lot better and ultimately Adam having, um, you know, the ultimate guidance. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Decker. Um, doing what happened in Washington today, where there are no requirements for face masks, et cetera, on the national level going forward. I think it's time we stop the Zoom meetings and actually talk about all this stuff face to face. And I think you can get a lot more accomplished by doing it face to face. Um, Bob, you can't. Well, Washington does not uh, uh, does not uh, supersede mass regulations, and at this point in Massachusetts, you can't have a meeting of over six people without face masks. Without, um, I, I think that's I think that's what the, the law is or the right state regs at this point. Well, when when will that be reviewed again? Because talk they your, talk to your governor. I don't know. I thought it was your governor. You're the Republican here, aren't you? Charlie Parker. Charlie Jen, Parker. You had your hand up. Go ahead. Jen? Can, yes. Jen Gannett here. So the planning board did redo their application. I actually really like their application, and it's really complete. If we use that, that's been, I'm sure it wasn't within my time at the town. Um, but I'm sure an attorney looked over that application and if we use something that the town already has as far as details that are needed on applications, I, I think that that work has already been done. That's side note from the conditions that we were talking about. So, Mr. Decker, my point right now is I agree with the uh, Mr. Stavrsky, not on many things, but I, I do think that it's important that Adam Costa come up with uh, his 15 favorite clauses on any condition and send them to us so that we can sit down and chat about them and find out which ones we, we think we want to incorporate on most decisions. But they aren't all going to be the same uh, decisions, all right, and may not all be made. But I, I really think that whatever conditions we decide to to put forward it on a regular basis, uh, council should vet them and make sure that we're not making any mistakes. Uh, with that, uh, I move we adjourn for the evening. Uh, but first, Bob, I want to know what other things you don't agree with me on. Oh, a lot of things. Like what? Like what? You know, David Potter, I second the motion. Okay, we're up. Uh, okay, just so you're going to meet uh, Alex. And Jennifer Rell and I are going to meet and discuss some things that you want to look at. Is that what's going to happen? Am I am I correct on that? Yes. Okay. We're going to have a think tank meeting. Okay. And then we'll report back to you guys about what we find and if it or if it was just a waste of time, and we'll go from there. All right. So then, all right. So John, I see a look on your face. So what do you want to do after that? You want to have a discussion uh, with the board and then go to Adam or send them to Adam and. Yeah, let's let's discuss it. I mean, if if somebody wants to put in the effort to try to okay. accumulate the information, distill it, and present it to us for things we should be thinking about, great. You know, that, that's that's wonderful. And I think it's because because uh, both of you are associate members. I, I have the sense that we might not have like public meeting uh, problems, public meeting law problems with that because you're not voting members i think there's only two there's only two yeah. Yeah. all right there'd only be two of us so right okay so they're gonna then they're gonna present them to, to jennifer gannett and she's gonna send them to us before we the meeting can send out stuff to you but we cannot have a conversation discussing it so we could send out a blind that's correct email okay i, so I like we'll the idea see. of sending it to jen or just bringing it up in the meeting if we well, have okay. time i just from my opinion, I'd like to see it first. Um, 
Yeah, whatever you guys want. Well, I, I like to look at them first. Um, you'll know someday what I'm talking about. Yeah, no, I, I completely understand. You know, and then and then we can look at them. Then we have our discussion, and then yeah. we'll proceed, John, with um, going to Adam Costa, or do we want some things from Adam? Just have Jen ask um, Adam for some some term from. Well, I no? think I think we wait to see what these guys come up with. Okay. That's then not, that's that's, I mean, I, I, if, if they want to put the effort into figure, trying to figure this stuff out. Okay. If that's what we're going to do, Thank then that's what we're going to do. We're, we're voting to close. To adjourn. adjourn. Non-debatable motion, I might add. Yep. Okay. You know that, huh? <laughs> Mr. Decker. Yes. David. David You're Potter. Muted, David. Sorry. Yes. Thank you. Um, I vote yes. Uh, and John. Yes. Meeting is adjourned. Um, thank you for your time and effort, gentlemen and ladies.